<laughs> yes. All right, I've got to be honest with you, Boston. It's Monday morning. I need a bit of a sugar kick, and I just want to eat cake today. Yes, I do just want to eat cake today. Today's video is five uh, microwave mug cakes, not always cakes, we'll come on to that, uh, that you can make when you need that quick fix. I'm not suggesting you make five, sank in French, thank you very much. Uh, we just have to do it sometimes. You just need that, mm, and it's good. Sometimes the microwave, a lot of people frown upon it, it can really help and be a useful utensil in the kitchen. Can you tell this isn't scripted? When it comes to making cakes or even recipes, I've done actually three course dinners in a microwave before. I like doing these sorts of videos. There's a couple of rules that I want to abide by. The first thing, like, like true in life, is appearances can be deceiving when it comes to your mug. Long-term viewers in the channel will know that I like to use these mugs often. I like the fact that they're clear, you can see what's going on. So I went to my supermarket this morning with the intention of buying two more. We've got five recipes, one of them doesn't even use a mug. Uh, but unfortunately, they only had this and I really wanted it to be clear. I saw that mug and I'm like, no way, that's like twice the size, but wait. For in this jug is 300 milliliters of water. Boom. And I was like, nah, this one's gonna be like double that, look. This is 300 ml of water as well. Same size. It's a little bit like when you go to a pub and you uh, get a pint, for example, and you order a pint and you get your standard pint glass and then some crazy cider brand or beer brand or whoever has brought out their own unique pint glass which goes like wonky and it's still the same size. You know, it's like pretty much like the size of a pepper meal. And your friend's trying to drink out of it. You're like looking at them going, the other thing to let you know is my microwave is 800 watts. If you are using a microwave 1000 watts, 1200 watts, whatever, it's gonna be more powerful, so you will need to reduce your cooking time, but generally, with all of them, keep your eye on it. Oh yeah, yeah, good point. Uh, Homer just reminded me, the last thing really is that these things do get Lionel Messi. That's a football reference, football joke, soccer joke. Like you have to embrace the messiness of a mug cake. I love the spillage and stuff like that that happens, but try and keep it to a limit with a cake under it. Once it cools down, you can tidy it all up. It's fine. So we are doing five of these. We'll start with two fairly simple ones um, that are like actually not even cakes. They're gingerbread and a cookie, but I still class that as baking. Let's do it. Some of the steps are quite similar, so I might not show you that over and over, but this is uh, first of all the butter, microwave to melt it. 30 seconds, it might not need 30 seconds. Like normally 20 is about right. There we go, look at that. I didn't even need to stir it. If you take it too much longer than that point, it will explode everywhere in your microwave. It looked like it started to do that actually. Does a little bit of a butter protest. Normally I'd use large eggs, but we're going with a medium. One, two, three. Oh my gosh, look at that. So you get all your wet ingredients in first. Mix it through. I'm using the bottom end of a wooden spoon just because I want to be able to sort of poke it and prod it a little bit. Believe it or not, like this isn't too far away from when you make a cake anyway, but that really is too wet right now. So one, two, three tablespoons of brown sugar. Is this making you realize how bad cakes are? All that syrup, all that butter, none of it's good. One, two, three tablespoons of flour. This is self-raising, so that should helpfully give it some rice. If you want, you can sometimes add bicarbonate of soda or baking powder in here to really push it up. That's when they really spill over. And last but not least, it is gingerbread. So add half a teaspoon of nutmeg, and more importantly, a little bit more ginger. So about a teaspoon of that. And we just mix this through. That's better. There's a couple of more flowery lumps in there. I'm working them through as best I can, breaking them down as well. I don't think it's ever gonna be perfect, but that's way nicer than that weird concoction it was looking like before. Where's that? Yeah, get that there, see that? It's a game, play the game. All right, here we go. You don't need to do this um, if you wanna live dangerously. You can, of course, just put it on the uh, plate of your microwave, but I like to just have this as a sort of spillage thing. 800 watts is typically around two minutes. This is just a thing that I do. I'm not gonna do it for the whole two minutes straight. I'm gonna like literally watch it. Yeah, so that's been almost 30 seconds. The first 30 seconds, it's still kind of warming up, doing its thing. Not too much happens, but after that, I really wanna sort of be in there because the, the eggs are starting to sort of cook, the flour's starting to do as well. If you're doing some ones that spill particularly, you really need to be like in and out like that, okay? And just keep going. In fact, this one's doing really well. It's just on the edge there. Now it's spilling over. Brilliant. But that's okay. You have to kind of expect that with these cakes. Yeah, you see, it's like really, it's really going for it now. And it does make you wonder, is there gonna be anything left? Just stick with it. 
Oh my gosh, you didn't see it then, but there was this big splurge that went over the top. It was like, ugh. No. <laughs> oh no. Ah, oh, it's shrunk. It's shrunk down a little bit. Some of that batter that was on there, I've poured it back in. Another 20 seconds, that might boost it up a little bit. Oh. But I'm not gonna let it. <laughs> yeah, you can't see too well. I'm trying to get in there. But once you let it cool down, it just settle and calm. That's why you do it in those blasts like that. But I think part of the experience is the mess. But if you want to avoid it, that's what you do. Really short blasts. Ah, okay, it's hot. You need to let it cool down anyway. Not only because it looks disgusting around the plate, once you clean it up, no one will know. That's the great thing. But the most important thing, you can see, oh, ha, 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 right? The cake, by adding that extra batter back in, it's actually increased a little bit. And the most important thing is a skewer through it. Oh, it's come out clean, crumbs. If you see any batter on there, just like a normal cake, it's not ready. And no one likes a medium rare cake. This next one is a cookie, chocolate chip cookie. So not really a cake again, but use a lot less. Melt the butter. There we go. You see a pattern form in here? So again for this, uh, we're gonna go classic cookie style. Um, almost identical when I do it normally. Vanilla extract, wet ingredients first, except this time the egg is just a yolk because the, the whites would kind of like make it go more meringue and too thick, but this is actually what does help to thicken it up. Pinch of salt. I am doing an unnecessary salt bay. <laughs> Three level tablespoons. Do try and get that as accurate as you can. You don't have to do this, but you know that sort of classic when you make a cookie, you have the tablespoon of light and then dark sugar. That's exactly what we're doing. Caster sugar as well. So you can do that if you want, or just go all caster or all light brown. Oh my gosh, I'm spilling it everywhere. <laughs> it's coming together really easy as a nice cookie dough and a spatula to be fair, I rave about them quite a bit. You can see how that's sort of cleaning the outside of the mug. We've got some mixed chocolate chips here. I've got some milk and some white ones. And you're just gonna like lift it into the batter so it sticks to it. And all that needs is about a minute in the microwave. Now there's not that much in there. So I'm not gonna put a plate on it. It's not gonna spill over massively. This is like a no hassle one. Oh yeah, it's not been in there too long, so it's not too bad. Oh yes, good. You can see, I was worried that the chocolate chips might have all sunk to the bottom. No, when this cools down, it will firm up. We've got ourselves a cookie. <laughs> yeah, I can hold this actually a bit more, but it's got that texture where it's soft immediately. So if you want like that sort of freshly baked cookie, it'll be nice, but I can actually physically take this out once it's fully cooled down and it will be a teeny bit harder, but that's what we want. So we've already done a chocolate chip cookie and gingerbread in just under half an hour. And that was with me filming it. So if you're making it, the cooking time is literally 90 seconds to two minutes anyway. You're probably eating it right now. We're gonna take the next three up a teeny notch, starting with chocolate brownies, which we absolutely love here on the channel. In fact, the dogs love brownies too, don't you? You like brownies? Well, I've never given them chocolate brownies, but I think they like the smell. Okay, I just melted the butter in the new glass and I was really worried like, cause it does feel way thinner. But to be fair, it seems all right. Let's carry on. It's quite similar to cookie at this stage. Uh, egg yolk again going in. Wow, that was quite high. <laughs> and again, the vanilla extract. Unnecessary salt bay. Yeah. Four tablespoons of self-raising flour. The difference is that this is self-raising flour, whereas the cookie had plain. Caster sugar, one and a half tablespoons, and then one and a half tablespoons of dark brown sugar, which is effectively just sand from a beach. I'm fairly convinced. A tablespoon of cocoa powder because, well, it needs chocolate in it. Probably wondering at what point it becomes a chocolate brownie. It's this bit and this bit. You could go white chocolate chips and dark as well and mix it up, but I figured let's just keep it consistent of like a whole milk chocolate vibe. We're gonna break this down together now. Oh, it does smell good. Don't drink it. Okay, I'm being safe again with this one. But this time, I'm gonna go 90 seconds. At about halfway through, I'm gonna put some more chocolate chips on top, but I will keep opening it as well. I don't want it to spill over. That's holding it really, really well. Right, we're going for 90 seconds as I say, so we're at 45. Oh, look at that. This is gonna be a really good one. It's just about luck sometimes, or the person that's making it. But you know what? Let's actually mix it up. Let's put some white chocolate chips just on top. Why not? Da, 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 da. So this plate is not really got much to do this time. But remember, now it's warm. This is where it could get really crazy. So really do monitor it. It's all right. I didn't need to worry. Ah, oh, 
Yes, you're gonna be hot now, I know, I know. Ooh. <gasps> Look at that! That looks amazing! It smells like brownie as well. Yeah, I just checked it and it's all good. That looks amazing. As it cools, it will shrink down a bit. Brownie in a mug. Yes! Lemon drizzle cake. Cake, so we are using a whole egg. Melted butter again, but this is a large egg. I wanted to try and get it to fill the glass a bit more. See the difference in that? The white and the yolk going in. Boom! We want to make it lemony, so I'm going to use some lemon zest. So I've got some lemon extract. Just a drop of that I find is a touch milder, a little bit more syrupy. Oh my gosh. Look, this is like that proper like dissolving sugar in fluids. So you're like, oh yeah, it's not really there. Four tablespoons of self-raising flour because we want that cakeness in there working with the whole egg. Unnecessary salt bay. These are some poppy seeds going in. So we're doing lemon and poppy seed cakes. Now, I've got to be honest, I'm actually really impressed with these uh, mugs compared to my other ones. I think the height is really helping. Oh, it could still be a bit more lemony though. I mean, we're gonna add a lemon icing on it anyway, but I just want it running through there. I love the colors on this one. I'm gonna go two minutes in there. This one's really good. I did keep my eye on it a lot. It rises up and then you stop it and it goes back down. It's like an elevator of cake. It kept bobbing up. Didn't spill much. Oh, yes, 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 yes. A little bit of a drop on it, but I can tell from there that it's done. I'll check. All the way down, boom. <laughs> Whilst it's cooling down, I've just got this ramekin. It's got about, I don't know, four tablespoons of icing sugar in there. I've got a trickle of water just to get it going. And then the rest I'm gonna add in with some lemon extract again, okay? You don't need too much, like maybe half a teaspoon. And this will be the drizzle. It might look a bit dry at the moment, but you've got to keep working it round. Obviously you can add more water if you need to. I find that using a pastry brush for this is really good because you can sort of use it like a pestle and mortar and break down any lumps of the icing sugar and you get quite a good icing. Uh, you can see how much that sponge has dropped down when it cools. It's nice, it's, it'll actually pop out if you want it to have it outside the mug. You don't have to do this, but it's kind of a bit like a poke cake where we add the icing on top and it will find its way. And you can do like a drizzle like that and it will set, but I'm just going to do a thick layer because it will actually seep through those holes into the sponge and it keep its way through it. You can see how it's getting a little thinner. That is it seeping through, but that's fine. You just need a little coating of the icing on there with some extra lemon zest. And you don't have to do this, but I'm gonna put some poppy seeds on there. Why not? There you go. <laughs> lemon and poppy seed cake. This last one is not actually gonna end up in a mug, uh, but we're using the mug as a mixer mold. This is a Barry Lewis one, uh, but it doesn't make it be any mug you want. Hello, it's Barry. Hope you're well and enjoying this video. This is just a quick reminder to let you know I'm currently running a crowdfunding campaign to support the next range of gadgets and I'm shipping them worldwide and even signing some of them. So if you haven't checked it out, check the link in the video or there should be a card in the video too. Enjoy the rest of this video and stay stonking. So again, melt the butter. There we go. Check that out. Unnecessary salt bay. I'm doing the salt now just to mix it up. Put a bit more effort into that. I think I actually got it in the mug. But hopefully now you can see why <laughs> I liked using the transparent mugs for this. I haven't got to get this crazy angle. So again, we're going cakey with this. It's just like a basic vanilla cake. We need, oh my gosh. That went everywhere. We're gonna add a little bit of milk for the vanilla-ness. I just said vanilla-ness and I was looking at the vanilla extract out of the corner of my eye. That's what's gonna give it that. Then the sugar, look. This is so, can look at all that sugar going in. And again, one last time because it is a cake, self-raising flour, AKA baking flour sometimes. And this is where it all comes together in here. So if you want it, you could add an extract as well. You could add a lemon extract or a strawberry if you wanted to make a strawberry cake, whatever. You could put sprinkles in it, whatever you want. But your concentration right now is on getting this as smooth as you can. And I quite like there's a bit of height in this mug so I can really start to whip it. There we go. I'm pretty happy with that. To be honest, we could shove that in the microwave right now or one of the other mugs. Uh, it would be a vanilla cake, easy peasy. But no, thank you. Uh, we're gonna serve it in an ice cream cone. I wanted to use some oyster ones uh, that didn't have them in the shop anyway, and they're a bit rounded. So a flat bottom ice cream cone, mini ones ideally because of the amount of batter you'll have. These things, I did cupcakes with them as well years ago. They're like oven proof, so they should work in the microwave too as a holster that will look like an ice cream by the end. All right, so I've gone about three quarters high to give it room to, to sort of grow with all that self-raising flour in. Let's microwave it. 
two minutes. I think this one has worked out perfect. It's steaming up a bit, but hey ho. Oh, yes. <laughs> what? All right, between you and me, you look a little bit like an omelette, but don't let... <gasps> Acting. Uh, look, it's not too bad, is it? It's actually, it's good, it's sponge-like, and that is not it. We can make it look like an ice cream now. So here is some buttercream icing. Uh, it's quite popular, I live by the seaside, to have a ice cream with uh, a flake in it. And uh, I'm gonna do that. In fact, I might push it in the sponge, give it some support. A few sprinkles as well. Then, a little bit of sauce. Oh! <laughs> Ice cream! Okay, I've got them all lined up here. They're looking good. Uh, the first one I did, the gingerbread, really sticky. I'm not gonna try and get that out of the mug, but the uh, cookie one, I've just pushed down to separate it, and hopefully, like a sandcastle, because that's the only one I really wanna serve like this, like the, the chocolate one's looking good as it is. Uh, we're just gonna go. <gasps> a cookie! If you wanted it warm and gooey, you should eat it almost immediately. As I say, now it's cooled down to, uh, yeah, like a cookie. And here they are all together. That is quite a lot of food. The cookie. Oh, that's soft, but enough pliable. It's cookie. Mmm. The gingerbread. I love that it's got like that syrupy coating on it, kind of like a sticky toffee pudding vibe. But no, it's very gingery indeed. Oh, delicate, cold, but warming. The ginger tang is just enough. Love it. Chocolate brownie. Oh. Dense. Oh, but gooey. Oh my God. It's still warm in the middle. The chocolate chips running through it. I just got like a whole blanket of melted chocolate. Oh my gosh, that, that is stonking. The lemon drizzle with hopefully some of the icing soaked through. I'm gonna break right through that. Oh, I don't know if it, the camera will pick up. There are little trails of the icing going there. Oh, I love how it sort of crystallizes the icing sugar as well. That is the lightest, most delicate sponge out of all of it, but the lemon vibe running through it. Oh yeah, baby. Now this one is, I've got to be honest, been a bit temperamental. You need to keep it in the fridge. Even at room temperature now, it's still like, I just want to weep. Look what's happened to it. Right, I'm going to just bite into it. Oh, that is the most naughtiest one because I'm getting a load of buttercream. I'm getting that, the sauce as well. The cake is perfect. Look, perfectly cooked through. When you microwave this, the wafer does get quite delicate. So once you take it out, let it cool. And I would stick it in the fridge before decorating it. I mean, I've stuck this in the fridge now and it's holding, but at first it was like, Whoa. I love doing these microwave recipes from time to time because for some of you guys that are just trying to get into cooking, just playing around with the microwave can be actually quite an easy start and it's fun. So there we go. I'm not sure which one was my favorite. I think the lemon drizzle had enough sort of lightness to it and the tang and it's just one of my most favorite cakes. If you do try any of them, don't forget to tag me on your favorite social media of choice. Subscribe for regular videos each week and uh, let me know down below what you want to see next. I'm going to possibly eat the rest of that lemon drizzle. Bye. Check your level player, no matter what your style, the kitchen's for me, Simon's moustache, goatee, maybe all three. Look, can you see that? <laughs> just taking a spare one out of the fridge that was going to make for Mrs. Barry, and the flake has fallen off of it, the chocolate, and the icing is just like a sad state of affairs. It's just like drooping. Just keep it cold.